Hi everybody! In today's episode, I want to show you how to install a farmhouse kitchen sink, paint your cabinets, install recessed lights and butcher block countertops. On Stylish Sky DIY. I always like to start off with a quick sketch. It might not look perfect, but at least it gives you a little bit of a plan and a direction. For a little more realistic look, I'm painting the grout white, I'm adding a farmhouse kitchen sink, a new faucet, I'm adding a little shelf space above the sink, install trim on the cabinet, replace the trim on the top of the cabinet, new hardware, and replace the dishwasher. But you don't want to get too crazy, you shouldn't spend more time than your actual renovation on this. That being said, I had to simulate the cabinet lighting. Demolition time! Removing the countertops, take out the dishwasher, and then I ran into the first problem. The farmhouse kitchen sink has different dimensions and I have to modify that whole cabinet. I put on a new faceplate, a new dividing wall, a sink support, a new cabinet would have been much less work. But most new cabinets are made from pressed particle board, composite wood, and it wouldn't be DIY. I saw this picture in a magazine and I really liked the trim, so I just kind of copied it as good as I could. Painting, don't you all love it? I did a lot of research of what kind of paint to use with the least amount of sanding. I wanted to use the same distressed look as I did on this picture frame but didn't end up doing it. Now installing the recessed lights above the kitchen sink. I'm using a hole saw to drill a two and a quarter inch hole. Then we feed the cable through. Then you plug in your light just like this. And we want to test it. And that's it. <laughs> Don't forget to shut the water off before you cut any pipes. In order to properly solder, you have to drain all the water from the pipe. In my case, I had to open the faucet upstairs to get air in. You also want to make sure that you leave the valve open during soldering, so the air can escape and not build up pressure. Otherwise, you will end up with a leaky connection. I usually prefer a so-called push or shark bite fitting. But this only works if you have a very clean cut copper pipe without any soldering debris. One of the drains in the sink gets replaced by the garbage disposal. We don't actually have garbage disposals in Austria. And the reason is not what you might think because of safety. It's because it attracts rats if the sewer is a food source for them. So the first time I came to America visiting my friend Peter over here, never seen a garbage disposal in my life, as soon as I came to his apartment he took out a wooden spoon and said, watch this. And I thought, oh my god, a wood chopper in the kitchen, I love it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, buddy. And then I learned you can even install it in your shower. There's a few things that you want to plan ahead before installing wooden countertops. There are several different ways that you can cut it and depending on it how many pieces you need to purchase. Since I am one of the nine people in the south without a pickup truck, this first scenario is how I cut mine. It requires only two six-foot pieces which you can fit almost in any. The 
next one is really the same way, it just depends what look you prefer, if you like a longer piece next to your sink or if you like a longer piece next to your stove. And then the third option is the hardest to cut and you need three pieces. If you don't get that angle cut perfect it will not fit. It also depends if you really like this look or not. Let's say you want to join those two pieces of wood perfectly together like this. What you can do, you can use a tool called biscuit joiner. I'm not sure where the name comes from, but I assume because the wood pieces look like cookies. You can adjust how deep you want to make your cut, you can adjust the angle, everything is pretty much adjustable. This is how I glue my countertop pieces together, so let me demonstrate on this example. First you take a biscuit and find out how deep you have to make your cut. Measure the thickness of your piece of wood so that you can adjust your tool to cut it right in the middle. Measure a mark how far apart you want to make your cuts. first cut and check with a biscuit if your cut is deep enough. Now make the rest of the cuts to your wood board. your cuts to your next piece you can still make adjustments if necessary. Now make all the rest of your cuts. There are several different choices of wood glue depending on your application. Apply wood glue to both sides, including the biscuit cuts. Join the wood together using clamps, or in our case, we are going to use pocket screws. There are special drill jigs available to make your pocket screw holes. Ideally you want to use a clamp to fix your drill jig so that it doesn't slip and slide around while you drill. Of course you can only use pocket hole screws if one of the two sides is not visible. In my case, the pocket hole screws will be underneath the countertop. Make sure you have the correct screw length or it will go through your countertop. Make sure you clean off excessive glue, it makes sanding afterwards much easier. And now you got yourself a very strong, durable connection. Before I screwed on the countertops, I had to make sure everything is leveled. And then the last step is to apply silicone. I was gonna use the really nice hinges that softly close your cabinet doors. Unfortunately, it just was way too much work to modify the cabinet doors and the cabinets to make this work. So I did actually end up buying some of those hinges just because I wanted to see if they would work. If you have those nice hinges in your kitchen where you can just snap on and off your cabinet doors and everything is adjustable, check them now. 
90% they're made in Austria by Bloom. I might be a little biased as an Austrian, but I'm telling you, they're making the best hinges. And I proved that to you in my next episode, where I show you how to build a kitchen island and a refrigerator cabinet. I did, however, replace all my drawer slides because they had these flimsy plastic rollers on there and just wanted something durable. You can almost sit in the drawer now, it holds up to 120 pounds. And this is the final result. New countertops, new kitchen sink, new hardware, new lights. 